How's it going? It's uh, been a while since I've made a video. I just wanted to show this off. This is the new Ultimate 64 motherboard, which is manufactured by Gideon. He's the same guy that does the 1541 Ultimate cartridge. One of these things. And this is the new board that he just created. And basically I'll give you a little bit of a tour of the board. You've got one, two, three USB ports. Uh, this one seems to serve as an internal port. So I've stuck a 16 gig uh, SanDisk Cruiser Fit flash drive in here as like an internal storage for the board. These two you can utilize um, any type of standard uh, flash drive that you got, such as these for instance. Uh, pretty much anything USB works. You can even use uh, USB hard drives if it's got uh, external power. I'm not sure how much power this board can deliver to the USB ports, but anyways, continuing on our little tour here, you have the Ethernet. That is an HDMI port, believe it or not. This right here is a uh, Wi-Fi adapter. Uh, currently, the firmware does not support the Wi-Fi adapter. It's going to be enabled later. Uh, so I'm interested to see what they're going to be able to do with that. And here's the uh, the main brain of the operation, an Altera Cyclone 5 FPGA. Got a little bit of a uh, RAM here. Here is a serial console header. Uh, I'm assuming it's used for debugging purposes. I, I have no use for it. There's my serial number and Gideon's signature. This is one of the first boards that he's released. Um, he put these up for sale on Christmas Eve, as a matter of fact, as a sort of a lottery. And so many people hit his website trying to order these that the website crashed. Anyways, continuing our tour of the board, you've got your standard serial and AV output jacks. And it's a standard 8-pin. Uh, I'll flip it around here in a moment and show you. Now here is where it gets interesting. You have dual SID chip sockets. Uh, they're selectable by jumpers for either 8580 or 6581. Uh, as you can see, I've got one of each installed in my SID chip sockets. Uh, alternatively, you can also elect to use the emulated SID chip that's built into the 1541 Ultimate uh, cartridge, which is essentially integrated into this board. Now for here, you've got your uh, cartridge port. Uh, I've added this shield myself. Did this, this did not come with the board. Uh, later boards are going to come with their own shield pre-installed, a brand new one. This is just a shield that I took off of an old board that was scrapped and added it here because it fit and it looks nice. Now that header you just saw a second ago is for this. Now you might be wondering what do you do about your user port since clearly you have no standard user port anymore. Well, if you really absolutely need your user port, there is a header right here, which breaks out the pins for the user port. Continuing our tour, you've got your 12-volt uh, DC input. Uh, the board says 7.5 to 15 volt, but the board is provided with a 12-volt DC power supply at 2 amps. Uh, you've got your standard two joystick ports. Now this here is kind of interesting. Uh, Apparently there was a small minor layout error on the board and Gideon had accidentally swapped two of the pins for the keyboard. So in order to salvage these boards, he uh, made up this little uh, adapter board here, soldered at a right angle onto the board, and this fixes the two swapped keyboard pins. Later boards will not have this, they will be fixed, and uh, the keyboard header will actually be upright as it should be. Uh, that's only for these early version 1.1 boards, as you can see there. Uh, there's your uh, JTAG programming header, uh, which I have no use for, since you can update the firmware of this board just as you would a 1541 Ultimate cartridge. Anyways, I'm going to uh, put it back together now and plug it in and show you how it works. Before I forget, here's the rear of the board. Uh, you have nothing for your channel select or RF output, obviously. Uh, standard 8-pin AV output, uh, as I mentioned earlier. And I do believe that 
a couple of the unused pins on this AV connector uh, actually allow you to get the second SID channel from the second socket. Uh, standard serial, of course. Uh, fully functional cassette port, just as you would expect. And here's the interesting part. Where your user port would be is your HDMI, your Ethernet, and your two USB ports that are external. Uh, just a second, and I'll flip around to the side, and here's the side of the machine. You've got your two standard joystick ports. You've got your uh, push-button power switch. It's not a rocker, uh, as you would expect for standard 64s. And you also have your power input jack. Now, your push-button power switch here actually has a, a number of different uses. Of course, you can turn the machine on using it, but uh, if you press and hold it and then release it, that brings up your uh, freezer cart menu. By hitting the button in combination of holding the restore key is how you bring up the uh, freezer cart menu. Just like if you were to hit the freeze button. So anyways, that's the side of the machine. Let's fire this thing. Alright, here's the uh, machine fired up. And uh, just like a 1541 Ultimate cartridge, it uh, starts up to whichever freezer cartridge you have selected. So I'm going to hit the button over here and it brings up the Ultimate 64 menu. And uh, as you can see here, those are my two memory cards I have installed. That's the one that's sticking out of the back of the machine, and USB 2 is the internal one. Let me turn this light off here next to me and get some glare on the screen. There we go, that's a little better. Okay, so anyways, um, let's fire up Bluemax. Works just as you would expect. It should be noted right now this board uh, only supports PAL. Supposedly uh, an NTSC version of the firmware. Uh, Gideon said he's not sure whether it's going to be software selectable or if you'll have to just reflash the firmware with an NTSC firmware. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to end up working. But uh, anyways Basically, the machine works just like you had a Commodore 64 with a 1541 Ultimate cartridge installed. Now, for the uh, extra features, there's a cup. There's an extra thing here in the menu that you won't see if you have a 1541 Ultimate cartridge, and that's this menu here, U64 specific settings. So, if you go in there, uh, lets you enable or disable HDMI scan lines, the address of your SID sockets. Um, a really interesting thing is here, the uh, output selector. With this you can select uh, which of your SID chips do you want to route to either the left or right audio channels. Uh, I predominantly use this with my standard JVC monitor here that supports PAL input. And as such, I've only got access to one of the audio channels. So I pretty much just set these both to whichever set I want to use. The standard AV cable audio output um, will come out of the right channel here. So this is the one you really got to worry about, at least for my particular setup. The other neat thing about this is you can actually get a pinout for the standard AV uh, output connector on this. You can set it to RGB. So for the first time, not only do we have a 64, that can natively output HDMI, you could actually set this to output RGB as well if you really wanted to. Yeah, other than that, this is the, uh, the Ultimate 64. As it is right now, compatibility is pretty good. Uh, there was just a uh, firmware update from 1.01, .01, which is what the board shipped with, to 1.02. And already that's fixed a few of the uh, issues that we've had. Uh, there's a couple other little minor issues, such as uh, there are factory Digifix resistors installed for the SID sockets. And uh, a few people, including myself, have disabled those in various ways. I just used a extra socket with the pin 26 clipped off of it to essentially bypass the Digifix resistor on board. Uh, just a couple little minor things that I'm sure will be repaired in uh, later revisions of this board. But anyways, right now, this is 
at least in my opinion, the most exciting Commodore 64 piece of hardware uh, to be released. And due to the FPGA nature of this, you know, there's unlimited possibilities that could be added to this. Uh, the, the sky's literally the limit. And the other thing I wanted to say too, for being what is essentially an entirely new C64 implementation in FPGA, Gideon has really pulled off a serious feat with this. I mean, this it's really unbelievable. Um, I, you know, it functions just as well as you it would expect it to. So anyways, I'm going to cut this short for now. Uh, if anybody has any suggestions or, you know, anything for me to test or whatever, since I have one of these boards, uh, I'm open to suggestions. Leave a comment. In the meantime, everybody take care and uh, hope we'll be back with some more videos soon. Uh, I do have a reloaded board that I got just a few weeks ago, uh, right before I got the ultimate board. So I could probably do a video on that as well if anybody's interested. I've also I got a couple more video ideas. I uh, kind of want to do a video about all the different Commodore 64 motherboard uh, revisions because I basically have access to all of the different Commodore 64 motherboard revisions. I think it would be cool to do a video demonstrating the differences between them and I don't know, I think it could be interesting. I'm sure some people would like to see that. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. I just wanted to make a little demo of this thing and show that it's working and hopefully inspire some other people to uh, get interested in this. Anyways, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.